Hi, it's Shiga time. And it's time to use the pendant on the mirror and call the wyvern and go fight the cyclone somehow. So let's do that. Not a ripple of imperfection mars the surface of this mirror. The mirror absorbs the light emitted by the pendant. The image of a young wyvern shimmers in the mirror. The last wyvern egg has finally hatched, and the wyvern is speeding toward Finn. Wyvern and Dragoon are together once more. So I guess the wyvern just grew up real fast. It hatched and it was ready to go. But it's going to be a lonely world for that wyvern because it's the only one left, so... I don't think it could just have eggs all by itself. So it's still going to be the last wyvern. It's a little bit weird that the cyclone itself is a dungeon. At least one that looks like this, because I think of a cyclone as air and... This doesn't look like air, this looks like a fortress of some kind. So does that mean the Emperor is flying around his fortress inside of a cyclone or something? The cyclone itself feels a little bit random. I mean, it was kind of funny to walk to the city and just see a big old cyclone sitting there. <laughs> but it does feel like a little bit of a random story beat to add. Which is probably to extend the game further. And I guess it also brings the wyvern into play, but you could do a lot of things with the wyvern. It wouldn't need to be a story beat like this specifically. The little guy I mentioned last time is doing okay, by the way. He's got a little bit of fuzz back. He's put on a little bit of weight. He's hanging in there. It could still go bad because he does have basically a weak immune system, but we're trying and he's been fighting the whole way, so he's doing good if anybody was wondering. I wonder if there will be any twist endings or any twist villain stuff, because I think we're getting to the end. We pretty much know about the Dark Knight stuff. We don't know why Leon is doing it, but I think we pretty much know it hasn't implied that anybody else is the Dark Knight, so I don't think that's going to switch up. But will there be anything else besides what we pretty much know? Like, will we get a big motivation at the end from the Emperor? Will there be any twist? Or will this be kind of a straightforward fantasy story? It is early on in the series, so... It might be pretty straightforward, where he was just taken over the world. <laughs> And that's all right. You know, you need some of those stories too. They don't all have to have some big twist at the end. If you have a twist for everything, then it becomes predictable too. We have seen some more monsters that become standard fare for Final Fantasy too. So I guess a lot of them were introduced in this game, like the Curls and the Marlboros and that kind of stuff. 
I even noticed the uh, bad breath move. We got to see some of the big bosses too. There was Leviathan, although we just saw a whirlpool and then we were in its stomach. We never actually saw the monster. All we did was break out of the stomach. But Leviathan existed. And then there was the Behemoth back at the Colosseum. And we also got the Adamantoys, but that was just sort of a random encounter it almost felt like. It wasn't really built up to. And it definitely wasn't as big as it was in Final Fantasy XV. Several of the dungeons had kind of random bosses at the end that don't seem to come up anywhere else. And that's what that one felt like. It was just sort of, here's a turtle thing. There was not really build up to that particular fight. The Colosseum had some build up and Leviathan had its kind of whole section. But those are three bosses at least that come back in some form later on. The whole Borgen thing. Borgen was mentioned early on that, oh no, this was the guy that betrayed us. But that was really about it. That was all the buildup he seemed to get before you ran into him and killed him. He really almost came off like a nun entity. I mean, I guess he killed Joseph in the end. But we didn't have a whole lot of time with Joseph either. We had a little bit of time with him and then he had his part. But for most of the game now, it's really just been the Emperor and the Dark Knight as the big bads. Okay, and one of these rooms has to have something in it, but it's going to make me run all the way around wasting a bunch of time. But at least it doesn't look like there'll be more stairs, so then I could go back down and get back to the other side of the dungeon. I'm not spending as much time checking which each stair goes to this time, because previously it always seems like the nearest stair is the one you should go up first, and then continue on to the other one. At least that seems to be the pattern. Am I missing something? Did they seriously make me go up all these stairs and just have empty rooms? <laughs> There's nothing in any of them? That's a choice, I guess. The real boss of Final Fantasy II is empty rooms. I guess I could have just warped, but whatever. At least that other set of stairs is just right next to the first one. So we're on the outside of the square now. I have to just make sure I don't miss any chests anywhere. Okay, this is kind of an interesting chest boss thing. We've definitely been getting more formidable monsters. Like it started out with the hornets and stuff and little goblins. And now we're getting a whole lot of the generals and captains, or whatever that is, a lot of the undead uh, dragons now. There's definitely been a big beefing up of the enemies, which makes sense for this part of the game. And it's kind of nice that it doesn't all feel like it's all on the same level or something. These enemies look like they should be stronger than the other enemies. And we also got the Dragoon, and now we're running into dragons. I also feel like I use my spells way more than in the first game. I don't use my debuff as much as I wanted to at first, because a lot of times they don't land enough, and for the bosses it feels like the bosses would be immune to them. But I do use buffs a fair amount, actually. And there are a variety of buffs. I think some of these probably get combined into one buff later. Like there seems to be a buff for magic, a buff to protect against debuffs, and then like a wall. You know, there, there's like three different ones that are very similar that probably get combined more later on. And I use them outside of boss fights too. Definitely the boss room. So, you've revived the wyverns and now, here you are. Yet you are but insects, 
unworthy even of being crushed under my foot. These won't put up that much of a fight. You'd think he could do a little bit better. So you've some skill after all. Let us see how you manage against this. So he added one more. <laughs> he can do a little bit more than this. This isn't very much. So it took you a minute to beat my first two. Well, how about three? <laughs> Quite extraordinary, really. It would appear I've sorely underestimated you. You should consider that I am about to do you a great honor. I shall kill you personally. Okay, so now we have the boss fight. There's no way this is the end though, because we haven't even resolved stuff with the Dark Knight. So this is like a boss fight before other boss fights. There's still gonna be more. I don't know how tough the Emperor himself will be. The other ones aren't going to be that hard. Based on what we've fought so far, I don't feel like he'll be that tough. I'm going to put up my buffs and everything, but this has seemed a little anticlimactic. Probably also because it's not going to be the end boss. I just don't know how everything is going to play out after this fight. There's very obviously more story to go through, but I do think we're getting pretty close to the end because we've already done quite a bit. And just reaching the actual Emperor and having a fight with the Emperor seems like this has to come near the end. This is not the midpoint of the game. So we'll see where it goes. It really hasn't explained how he just disappeared before though, has it? I guess it's just going to gloss over that part. It seemed like it was something kind of shocking for the group, so it would be nice if they had some sort of reason how he did that little trick and disappeared at the Colosseum. But it doesn't seem like they're addressing it. It was magic. That's it. I've been working on leveling up Ultima since we went through all that trouble to get it. But it doesn't seem like it's getting mentioned a whole lot anymore. It was supposed to be that we get this super duper spell and that solves our problems, but now it's just... <laughs> it's a little bit forgotten. And now we've got him alone. No, I will not die. It's over. We should get back to Fen. They'll be waiting. Through your efforts, we've finally defeated the Emperor. Thank you. The world was shrouded in darkness, but now the light of peace shines once more. Firion, Maria, Guy, Ricard. What more could we ask of you? The tales of your bravery will be handed down for generations. Now, let us celebrate. Many have come hoping to catch a glimpse of the heroes who brought down the Emperor. I wouldn't want to disappoint them.
My ladies, my lords, the Dark Knight, Leon, has declared himself Emperor. He's reorganized the Palamitian Empire. He'll send troops. He'll, he'll slaughter us all. Ooh. It can't be... Leon. The Dark Knight went and claimed the throne for himself. Leon, the Dark Knight? But I thought he was your friend, your brother. I'll go to him. I'll make him understand. He must be under the spell of the Emperor. I know it. If he's ascended the Emperor's throne, there's only one place he can be. Palamitia. Castle Palamixia is a fortress situated high in the mountains. It cannot be approached on foot. Leon, the Dark Knight, do you really think you can fight Maria's brother? This is our battle. You have to let us finish it. I had a feeling you'd say that. Just make sure you come back. It's an impregnable fortress. Luckily, Paul doesn't know the meaning of the word. I've heard him bragging about breaking in... Just when we get the Emperor out of our hair, the Dark Knight has to go and louse things up again. That cyclone really did a number on me back in Paloom. Ugh. My body isn't taking too kindly to the idea of moving around. Sit okay? I'm a mess, is what I am. But my airship made it through without a scratch. I want to lend it to you. That's lend you here. I'll be wanting her back. You take good care of her. Sid, Sid, no, hold on. That was Sid's dying wish, you know. He knew he was dying, but he was ready. He planned on giving me the airship when his time came. He loved that ship with all his heart, and he entrusted it to you. Think about that. That time I snuck into uh, the castle, I used a kite to land on the roof. The only way in is from above, from the sky. If there was ever a time you used Sid's final gift to you, I'd say this was it, wouldn't you? Never mind all that other stuff that just happened. Why didn't Guy or Ricard get to dance? Surely somebody would want to dance with them. It just saved the world. And I'm just gonna go check out the Dragoon place to see what Ricard has to say about seeing them. Are you really a Dragoon? I am the last Dragoon. Your father was a good friend. I plan to get revenge enough for him and everyone else. Once the Emperor is dead, I'll be back. And once I am, I'll raise you. I'll raise you to be a fine Dragoon. Okay, I guess. All I know is I want you to get that Emperor. Ricard, you're alive. Alina, where are Philip and the others? 
Have they really all been killed? They have. After you left, we lost the wyverns. Then it was only a matter of time. Alina, I want you to be strong. I'm here, and when the fighting is over, I'll come back. You and Kane look after Dees for me until then. <laughs> so I like that one. He tells the kid, I knew your dead father, and I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna raise you, you're gonna be an awesome dragoon, everything's gonna be okay, and the kid's just like, oh, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> Also, nice little touch, the kid's name Kane. I wonder if that was added in later, or if for Final Fantasy IV they named Kane after the kid or what. I will give it to the writers, that does sound like a typical child. <laughs> it seems like we're going to get a lot of story cutscenes in this video, and probably the next one too. I think the next one might be the end. I did have something I kind of wanted to talk about with uh, the Megamind stuff. I made a Megamind video last week instead of this because they announced the new show and the new movie. So I just ended up doing that instead because it was a timely thing. And normally I keep the videos kind of separate because I figure Final Fantasy is Final Fantasy, Megamind is Megamind. Somebody watching Final Fantasy might not care about the Megamind stuff. But I actually wanted to talk a little bit about this just because I think it's not necessarily Megamind-centric. I think this is more of a broad thing that I wanted to talk about. And it's probably something that people have seen a million times with all different kinds of series. But I happen to know something was about to drop, and so I was already watching. So I got to see the reaction from the very start. And I knew... We didn't know a lot about the movie before. We didn't know what exactly it would be. We knew about the TV show, but it seems like a streaming movie and then a streaming TV show, which obviously have much lower budgets than the theatrical release it had 13 years ago. So I had no surprise about the quality it was at and stuff. That seems pretty typical to me. But I got to see the reactions of people who are finding out about it for the first time from the beginning. And it was kind of interesting to watch because at first everybody was basically disappointed that the animation quality wasn't the same as before, which you're not gonna get with a TV series. But that was the first initial reaction and I could kind of get that. Like, of course I'd want something better too. And the voice actors were different, which happens a lot with this kind of stuff in TV shows and streaming and stuff. I don't really get why the original voice actors will do that if I had a big part. I would make sure that I kept that big part to myself. But it happens a lot with actors, and on this side of the pond, a lot of times they hire actors instead of voice actors. So I get both of those complaints. But then you had the hyperbole, and this is where I'm getting into stuff that I think you could apply to all kinds of releases, where everybody's yelling about their childhood being ruined, and this is the worst thing they've ever seen. <laughs> It's always like the most dramatic thing you can possibly think of. It's like, it's a kid's TV show, man. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> you know, of course, it would be nice to have a big theatrical release again, but... You know, I I lived in a time where we got TV shows that were cheaper than the movies, so it's not something new. I was a Sonic the Hedgehog fan growing up, so... <laughs> but anyway... So it started with that, and it was interesting to watch because you would see like the same complaint over and over. The voice actors, the animation, the voice actors, the animation. Uh, some people were concerned about the story. I think some of them were jumping to conclusions about the story because they only took a really small bit and made assumptions. But I mean, we'll see what the story is when it actually comes out. But then what would happen is... So one person would come up with a clever thing and then suddenly you would see a whole bunch of people repeating that one clever thing hoping to get credit for it. <laughs> it's like, I, I know you didn't come up with that. I saw the first tweet. And then after that, probably really in the spirit of Megamind, people started making memes. And the, that one I think works. The other thing was the many, many videos that popped up where people were desperate for views. Some of these videos, they say nothing. 
they just know that it was trending and so they made a video on it and they were like hey look at my video about this even though they had nothing to say about it they had no idea what was going on they had wrong information and so you would get people in the comments who were saying they should have done this with the story instead and then they describe what they're doing with the story because they didn't know what was going on <laughs> but uh but yeah, it was kind of interesting to watch the whole thing go down and just how people react, especially with how many people there are who are trying to grow their channels by being the most dramatic and hyperbolic. And there's so many channels doing that these days. When I watch critiques, and I do watch critiques, but I like to watch people who really get into it and have insight to add. I remember one video, the guy just said, that he didn't know what it was and he's not going to watch it because he doesn't have the streaming service. And that was his input. <laughs> that was just it. <laughs> it's just he made a video because he saw it was trending and he wanted to get views. That's it. So that one I find kind of a little annoying. I mean, I guess that's what people do, but there's kind of a disingenuous vibe to it, isn't there? And then the other thing is like I get criticism. There's not a problem with that. Criticize stuff all you want. But then there's the people who get really overzealous. And if somebody's looking forward to it, they can't take it. They have to go in and tell everybody who might be looking forward to it how bad it is. I even saw when I was looking up the video game streams to show people and give them some information. I saw people making comments in the video game videos from like seven years ago. It's like, this person who made this video game video does not care. Why are you here making comments in it? <laughs> I sped up the video here because this fight took a little bit, but the curls and the marbles and moves like bad breath are a thing in this game. And the curls have an instant death move as well as paralyzation stuff already. Or I don't know if it's a move so much, but sometimes if they bite you, you just die. But you have the really overzealous people. And that's why I was saying that what I'm talking about, I think, is very broad. Because I think we see that with a lot of things these days. And it kind of reminded me why I don't want to go that way. Because maybe you get a few quick views, but all I did was made a video collecting all the information and stuff. And it did very well on my channel. I have a tiny little way to be channel. And that video did well and I didn't have to be negative or really talk about anything else. <laughs> of course, it takes effort to do that because I had to look up the information, collect all the points that we know about it from not only the trailer, but the keynote and things like that and other bits of information we know from other materials. So it takes effort to do that, which is probably why the other ones don't do that, but... I just feel like it's better to go that way than the hyperbolic way. People who build their platforms off drama tend to eventually get eaten by the drama. I think it's better to talk about things you're into than trying to jump on every trend in order to get popular. Like Super Great Friend doesn't have the biggest channel, but I really like his stuff because he plays oddball games that a lot of people don't remember and he puts his own twist on them. And it's obvious that even with their flaws, he really enjoys them and likes them for what they are. He can criticize them, but also likes the games. Except for Saw and stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, he plays some goofy ones too that don't work very well. But with things like Illbleed, Nobody knew that game. He just liked it himself and he wanted to show people it. Personally, I think that's the way to do it. And when I started this channel, I was planning on playing all the Final Fantasies either way. I had already bought a bunch of them. And I just figured I'll record them and make videos. Why not? Even if they're not the best, I'll be learning how to do it better. And I'm glad I am doing it. Looks like we're about to get to the end of this dungeon. There's a big boss up there. We have to go confront Leon. I expected you'd come, Firion. Do you really think you can kill me? Stop, both of you. 
Why do you insist on fighting Leon? Weak words from the weak. Do you know what rules the world? Power, sheer power. The Imperial throne is mine. The weak cannot survive without the strong to control them. How many lives did the rebels throw away when they chose to oppose the Empire? Delusions of grandeur do not become you, Liam. Though I find the thought of you as Emperor quite deliciously absurd, it ends now. This world can have but one Emperor, and I am he. You're alive. What are you? Not that it matters. The Empire is mine now, and I have no intention of handing it over. the Empire. Huh, I've no need for such trifles now. All the world shall fall by my hand, and the powers I gained in hell. And your blood will be the first to spill. Call the Wyvern. You can use it to escape. Ricard, what are you doing? You may have a little trouble spilling the blood of Ricard Highwind, last of the Dragoons. Prophetic insect. I will enjoy making you rue those words. May the spirits of the Dragoons lend me their strength. Ricard. Ferian? What's happened? You! You're the Dark Knight! You'd best start explaining. The Emperor has risen from Hell. Ricard, Ricard died so we could escape. Joseph, Minwu, Sid, Ricard, all dead. I don't know how much more I can take. As long as the Emperor lives, more will die. Leon... Princess... Let Leon join us, please. The Dark Knight? A rebel? I leave the decision to you. Leon, let's fight the Emperor together, please. Maria Ferian. All right. The Emperor sold his soul to the devil. Once, the monsters of hell poured forth into the world. They entered using a path known as the Jade Passage. I've heard there is a place in Mysidia known by that name. The castle that appeared at the time of the Emperor's resurrection. It can only be Pandemonium, the fortress of the Lord of Hell. The myths and fairy tales of Kashwan speak of a small lake in Mysidia. It's said that those who enter the lake are taken to Hell.
So it seems like next time might be the last video for this. We've come to the end. It was a little bit funny there that the Emperor just comes from hell. <laughs> I'll admit I didn't see that one coming. I mean, I kind of saw it a little bit because of the lore and stuff, but I think that might just be the title of my video. <laughs> <laughs> the Emperor has come back from hell. Anyway, so next time looks like it might be the last video. And we'll see what happens. We've got Leon now. He's suddenly... We forgave him very easily after taking over the Emperor's spot and all the other stuff. We, we're very forgiving. And I like that we looked Hilda in the eye and we were like, hey, you know... We've lost all these people, Joseph and Minwu and Ricard and, you know, and we just do not mention her father. <laughs> Nor, we did not mention Scott either. You know, could you think of any other people who were important to Hilda? <laughs> I sure can't. But anyway, so next time... We will finish up, I guess. It's probably one video left. I'll see you then.